for the goalkeeper. Loach with the first time ball clear before Mateo can get there. Khan and Coleman battling for possession. Whittle with the ball over the top. Fernandez just getting in front of Shimangri. It comes over Mandeville. Still Leo Mandeville trying to find room for a shot. Does find room for a shot. And Leo Mandeville gives the Spirax the lead. Chesterfield take the lead against Newlin Town. Good work approaching the move, and when the ball's played into Mandeville, Mandeville looked like he'd run up a blind alley for a moment, but he dragged the ball away, found space. Again, it didn't really look like there was room for the shot, but Mandeville spotted it at that near post and slotted it home nicely. It's Chesterfield 1, Kingsland Town 0. Liam Mandeville. Here's the goal scorer for the Spyrites.
another chance to cause danger from a set piece for the Spyrites. What a lift it would give them if they could snatch something at the end of the game here. Mandeville will take the free kick. McDonnell organising his defenders. Quality needed from Mandeville. It's not a bad ball. And it came out to Weston! What a hit! Sublime strike from Curtis Weston. He could hardly have hit that any better. And Chesterfield might just have snatched this right at the end. Well, what a huge goal this could be for Chesterfield. It's a really good header. Yes, it's into a dangerous area. He ideally, wants head that wide. They've defended them so well. But what a strike from Curtis Weston. You don't see many cleaner strikes than this. Look at the technique. McDonald, absolutely no chance. A game that's been lacking any kind of quality. That deserves to win any game. It's his first goal since February of 2020. <laughs> Would you believe it? Wow. What a strike that is. Find that home beautifully. Gabongo Shimanga gives Chesterfield parity. It's Chesterfield one, Dagenham and Redbridge one. Gabongo Shimanga from the penalty spot gets his 23rd goal of the season. Shimanga! I'm Gabongo Shimanga. Gives Chesterfield the lead for the first time in the game on 62 minutes. Jeff King won the penalty for the second time in the game and Kibongo Shimanga fires it home to make it Chesterfield 2, Dagenham and Redbridge 1.
pretty quickly as well. And a nice piece of play on the left hand side. Good ball in, but the court reads that well and then turns and plays a lovely short ball to Mandeville. And Chesterfield got the opportunity for a counter now. It's Whittle, plays it to uh, Sante. He's in the Solihull half. He's got to go down the left wing. He's got Clark for company. Clark's done well to uh, check him but it's still Asante on the ball he's still trying to find some space Whittle's down to his left hand side it's played to Whittle now he's going to uh, play infield towards Mandeville just outside the 18 yard area back to Whittle on the touchline in for Asante oh he couldn't quite control that but he's uh, brought it down bit of fast feet plays it into Whittle again Whittle on the edge of the six yes! Yes! and Whittle has scored the first goal against Solihull Moors in 9 hours and 58 minutes to put the Spies into the lead his second goal on consecutive matches, it is Sparrow's one, Solly Holmore's nil. Great run, great run from um, Alex Whittle there, I mean, I thought he'd gone, I thought he'd, uh, he just got caught in the box, I thought he was going to go down, lost a bit of his foot in and then um, managed just to get enough on it to put it into the corner, great, uh, great tenacity and um, probably the first meaningful attack from Chesterfield there and um, got a goal. Just uh quite high from the halfway line throwing taken by Whittle headed away by Solihull Moors Weston sticks a leg in there it goes up and it's going to be Gudger play it forward Matt Mandeville reads that situation well and he's intercepted he's going to have a long shot he's had a shot and it's uh, bobbled away from the keeper Asante edge of the area gets a second shot and yeah a close Asante 20th minute two more spiralls <coughs> that's a great shot from uh, Leon Mandeville some real power behind it so uh, the keeper couldn't really get hold of it, it hit him on the shoulder, came out and everyone thought, I thought Santa was going to hit it first time but he had the presence of mind and um, the composure to just take it to, take it to the side and um, what a good strike right in the bottom corner. King plays it in, comes out here to Kellerman, it's sat up to be hit! It's a stunning goal! He comes in any time at the end of the half. He'll rarely have hit one better than that. Glorious goal from Kellerman. And Chesterfield are in front. Well, when you've been as poor, if you have been as Chesterfield in this first half, every now and then, you just need a bit of brilliance. And this from Jim Kellerman is absolutely brilliant. Do they deserve it? Probably not. But you just see the bend he gets on it, cuts across it brilliantly. That squeezes inside Grant Smith's post. It's a really, really excellent finish. A quality strike and a big goal. Shanti and Quigley at the back post. It went near post and got towards Grimes. This is Maguire, lays it off for Khan. Whelan. Good skill from Whelan. Chance here again for uh, Mandeville. Now King. Jeff King to the back post. And Chesterfield and the equaliser! It's Lawrence Maguire who gets the equalising goal! Chesterfield the level! 61 minutes in! And Lawrence Maguire becomes Chesterfield's 19th goal scorer of the season! King with the corner. Mandeville and Whelan further back. Everybody else in the area. The ball comes in. Oh, and it's alive! And it's Maguire again! Lewis Maguire gets his second goal of the night! Maguire hits it over the line. And Chesterfield have the lead. Silence at the North County to the ground. But delight from those Chesterfield supporters. Maguire doesn't get many goals in the season. Right here, he's got two in just one game. It's Chesterfield two, not County one. And it's going to be a quasi Asante to take the penalty. But that, uh, Mislav Janos has been a good goalkeeper tonight. On loan from Liverpool, the 20 year old has made several good saves already. Now he has to make another one. It's Asante with the shot! And the centre with the goal! Chesterfield making 3-1 and surely now the points are with the Spyrites. The Claudia Shanti 
gets his fifth goal of the season from the penalty spot. And it's Chesterfield three, Lost County one. Neil. Neil Harrison, Neil looking to shoot. Hits Grimes. And away at the back by Whittle. A good ball to Weston. Curtis Weston back in the side after his three game suspension. Santi plays it on. Kellerman. Into the area by Kellerman, but away by Hock by uh, Laparta. Jeff King tries a shot. Oh, yes! Jeff King! Beautiful goal! Nine minutes into the game. And Jeff King scores an absolute cracker. Jamie Grimes delighted there, as you can see. But the Chesterfield team celebrated in front of the East End. And what a cracking shot that was from Jeff King. We've seen him do it before, and he's done it again. Jeff King gets his third goal of the season, and Chesterfield leads by a goal to nil. Whittle clearance, Quigley underneath it, getting his shirt pulled there by uh, Laparta. Miller into Mandeville. Out wide now to Rowley. Joe Rowley attacking this south end defence. Played back to King. The ball in from King. Miller's header! Calvin Miller! Give the Sparrows the lead! The ball in from King. And Calvin Miller on 78 minutes scores Chesterfield's second goal of the afternoon. It's Chesterfield 2. South End United won. Huge call. Asante will take the penalty. Up against Ashby Hammond. Really controversial decision to award the spot kick. Can Asante keep his cool? He did! Goalkeeper barely moved. And Chesterfield inside the final 10 minutes are in front at Meadow Park. A place where Bora Wood are unbeaten so far this season. That's right on the line now. Well, you'll certainly know the significance of this penalty and what it could mean to Chesterfield in terms of their title push to the Football League. I mean, it's a composed penalty. Watches the goalkeeper all the way and sends it the wrong way. You're going to do that, you have to get it right, and he does. And King swings the ball in, it's headed away quite comfortably, I think, there, but at the back by Maidenhead. Rowley. Whittle won the, ball, won the ball back well. Kellerman. Whittle. Khan out to that left hand touchline again where Jeff King is at the moment because that's where he was to take the free kick almost. It's uh, a chance there. Oh, yes! Asante! Aquarius Asante breaks the ice here at the Tetley Stadium. And in some style. to set it, oh what a good goal, taken superbly wasn't it, Alex Whittle had got forwards, the pass to find him was precise and so was his finish, maybe against the run of play, it's Chesterfield in front of Meadow Lane. Well you're completely right there Adam, it is a goal against the run of play. It's the first time they'd switch play from right to left. And it's the first time that they had a bit of possession within that final third. And it's a little cute run there from 
Tom Whelan that makes that late run into the box and then just tees it up nicely for Alex Whittle, who finishes it like an accomplished striker. Past Sam Slocum in the Notts County goal. It's a crucial goal at this stage of the game. When you've been on the back foot without the ball and you find yourself a goal, that can build huge confidence. It's going to be Jeff King this time from this side. An outswinging ball with the right foot of Jeff King, or will it be a short corner to Calvin Miller? King now. That's a good ball inside for Mandeville. Oh, headed home by Alex Whittle. Are you alone, Maguire? Maguire with the header, and Chesterfield have the lead in the sixth minute of the game. Maguire, a well worked move, first of all, between King and Miller from the corner. King's ball into the, into the box, pulled back to Mandeville. Mandeville curled it to the back post, and Lawrence Maguire is there, hammering it home with his head. It's Chesterville 1, Grimsby Town 0, with six minutes of the game played. Chesterfield struggling to find a way through this Dover defence. Mandeville. Whittle. Grimes back to Maguire. Oyeleka. Oyeleka is faced to bring it forward if he can keep the ball. Yeah! Gives Chesterfield the equaliser. 24 minutes into the game. but it's Shadow Khan that's got the goal actually so 24 minutes into the game it's uh, Shadow Khan anyway, he's given credit for that so Chesterville 1 at Dover Athletic 2 we've got 8 minutes plus stoppage time to go the Sparks trailing here in a match they really can't afford to lose and a match they really could do with winning it Maguire Jack McCall Weston. That's in for Khan. Shadu Khan with a chance. Oh, yes! Shadu Khan gets his second goal of the afternoon. And Dover's lead didn't last long. The ball played through the middle there. Shadu Khan on the right hand side. And a great goal. Shadow Khan, the second goal for him this afternoon, and it's Chesterfield 2, Dover Athletic 2.
Chesterfield. It's Tom Benson there getting manhandled. Khan on the ball. Whittle. The court to Sadu Khan once more. Whittle. Cutting inside. In with his right foot towards Denson. Headed away by Ranson. And strike this side! And it's Jeff King with his left foot. And gives Chester Bay on the lead. Almost out of nothing. Jeff King finds for Rising Foot for the first time in the game. Tremendous amount from the edge of the area. Jeff King fires home with his right foot, and it's Chesterfield three. Dover Athletic two. Came off Deborah, Chesterfield corner. King takes it. Oh, it's in! What a brilliant header! It's Danny Rowe! Chesterfield had the lead from the set piece. Well, Pete Wilde, the Halifax manager, Set set pieces would be important, and so it's proved against his side. Well, it's a goal they deserve. They've been on top, they've been positive. And it's a great little run there from Khan because it creates the space for Danny Rowe to run in across the near post, and the space is there for him to go to. And he attacks it brilliantly. And as you mentioned, Pete Wilde was talking pre match about set plays, the importance of it. And he just gets that little run on Warren. And that's all Danny Rowe needs. Brilliantly flighted ball in there from King. Timely header, timely goal. Rowe. Clever ball. King with the chance to cross. Ah! Oh, what a goal! It comes against his former club. It zipped him! Whether he meant it or not, not entirely sure. It certainly caught Johnson by surprise. But Chesterfield here, with just under 25 minutes to go, have doubled their lead. What an unbelievable strike this is from Jeff King. Against his former club as well. The awareness of Danny Rowe to get the ball out wide, and he's driving forward. He thinks he's going to cross the ball into the box. I'm going to stick my neck out on the line here, Adam, and say he's meant that. And you look at the goalkeeper, should you be being at your near post like that? No. But the power of the shot was absolutely emphatic. The time of the goal is so important because it just gives them that little bit of breathing space. King with a great ball for Mandeville, who's put it across quickly! What a lovely move that is from Chesterfield! And a confident finish from Quigley. The man restored to the starting lineup today. He scored inside eight minutes. Well, the unpredictability of the playoffs are at it again. And I'm really pleased for Joe Quigley because I know he's becoming for a lot of criticism for his performances in a Chesterfield shirt. But you have to say the runner, Mandeville, was absolutely brilliant. The ball over the top from King was there to be run onto. And it's a perfectly weighted cut back there for Quigley. 
He timed his run perfectly. It's a confident finish as well. Banks. Not many options wide, it goes over the top to Mandeville. Mandeville with a chance! Oh, Mandeville with the goal! The ball over the top there. Mandeville made a great run. And Liam Mandeville gets his first goal of the season for Chesterfield. 64 minutes played and the spot answer in front it was always coming but it looked it was starting to look like one of those games where you create all the chances and still can't find a way through but Liam Mandeville there slotted that home for quite a tight angle you better say but he put it past the goalkeeper and uh, Luca Ashby Hammond who's had a marvellous game for all the shot beaten on that occasion you'll be disappointed to be beaten from a tight angle like that but beaten he was and it was a great effort there from Liam Mandeville. Chesterfield won, all the shot nil. Palmer going up again for the header. Banks to Dobra. Banks this time across the field to Jeff King. King plays it forward to Mandeville. Mandeville on again to King, that's a great ball. Jeff King this time, can he get a better chance at it? It's still King with his shot! Oh yes! Jeff King gets the Chesterfield goal! In the 10th minute of the game, the Spirites are ahead! Jeff King with his first goal of the season, and what a goal it was! Ten minutes in and the spot I shall the lead and a great move it was too. The ball played out by Ollie Banks to the right hand side. Jeff King played it into Mandeville. Mandeville gave an excellent ball in return. King got down the byline, cut into the penalty area, took it in the end on his left foot and banged it into the corner of the net. It's Chesterfield 1, Wrexham 0. They've done a great job so far with uh, almost halfway through the first half now, not quite, almost halfway through this first half and just that one goal from Jeff King separates the two teams it's King on the ball plays it long towards the Santis run Tozer goes with him and Tozer will let that one go no he's not he's played it back to the goalkeeper thought he would let it go and Armando Dobra's got in front of the goalkeeper Dobra Howard out of his area Oli Banks oh it's 2-0 Oli Banks the scorer great goal by Chesterfield and it was all of Wrexham's own making. <laughs> the 
Well, a great for the ball played back there to by Ben Chosier to the goalkeeper. I thought the goal, I didn't think he played back, but he did. Armando Dobra quickly into Mark Howard there, took it straight away from the goalkeeper, and eventually couldn't finally got a chance to get the goal himself. He laid it off to Ollie Banks, and Ollie Banks fires that ball into the back of the net to make it Chesterfield 2. Wrexham nil with 23 minutes of the game played. Well, Chesterfield have been really up for this so far in this first half. We're only halfway through the first half. There's still three quarters of the game to go. But it's the roar of the Chesterfield supporters at the moment that you can hear. Grimes. finds Williams quickly will get to this needs some support arriving in the shape of Asante and Mandeville backing him up as well Asante and now Mandeville might have hit that first time oh it didn't matter what a lovely finish that is magnificent from Mandeville and the Spyrites lead at Meadow Lane Well, it's a magnificent strike from Liam Mandeville, but a lot of credit has to go to Quigley because he spreads the play, he stretches play and holds it up brilliantly. Doesn't have too much support around him, but what he doesn't do is panic. And he just waits for the right time to get that cross in. Brinley makes an absolutely brilliant bot there to start with. And then you all of a sudden you think that Mandeville's lost a chance. You mentioned could have struggled with his left foot, but he just creates a tiny bit of space to get on his right foot and strike it brilliantly to that left-hand side of the goal. A quick touch there with the outside of his right foot. Strikes it brilliantly. And there's absolutely nothing that Slocum could do between the goal. It's a brilliant strike and it's a brilliant start from Chesterfield. The second of the season. Had a change of number over the summer. Went from number 10 to number 7. Quickly certainly played his part in that goal as well. So he does have options to look at. But just at the moment, they just can't find a way of getting through Chesterfield. Quickly to Asante. Asante, brilliant! He's thumped it home! You don't save those! And Chesterfield, who've been on top at the start of this second half, now have two! Well, it's so, so important to score when you're on top. And again, it's just quickly been an absolute nuisance in that final third. That sets up Asante. Again, you look in those one-on-one -on -one situations as a defender. Don't allow him on that right foot of his. And Cameron does that, and he loses his footing. That allows Asante to get half a yard and absolutely smash it past Sam Slocum in the goal. All across the ground, and Horton kept it in play nicely for Asante. Horton's continuing his run, Asante seed him. This is Brandon Horton now getting forward for Chesterfield. There's three in the box. The ball comes in toward the back post. King arriving! in! And Jeff King has his shot deflected out for a corner. The first corner of the game goes to the spy right. So a great move there by Chesterfield. Great running down the left-hand side by Brandon Horton. And Jeff King denied at that near post, his near post. And the only reward is a corner. It'll be King to take it. Quigley didn't get there, and Williams at the back, oh! oh and he's played home! Chesterfield at the lead! In the opening two, less than two minutes on the clock, and the Spyrites are in front. The goal coming in from the corner kick there. And uh, it went over the head of Joe Quigley, who I'm sure distracted a lot of the Barnet defenders. It went on and then almost cleared. It came out to the edge of the area. And Ollie Banks fired it home. Ollie Banks takes charge of the free kick with uh, Gary Roberts and Paul Cockins behind him. Banks. Williams. Oldecker. Mandeville. Now King. 
Finds Quigley, great ball from Quigley. Mandeville puts King in here. Great chance for the spot rights, King. And stuck on by a Florian Santi. Chesterfield get their single in right. A Florian Santi, the goal scorer. And Chesterfield have their lead restored. Great move again down the right hand side. Jeff King instrumental in it. Great ball by Quigley initially laying it off to Vanderbilt. And then Jeff King doing the work to get the ball into the box. And when it was repelled so far by the Barnet defence, it was Asante to smash it home to make it 2 1 to the Spyrites. Gorman tries to play the ball over the top. Grimes now goes with de Havilland. And again, Flanagan's in there, but again, Chesterfield tidy up at the back, this time with Oldacre. Dobra, great skill from Dobra. Tries to play Shimanga in. Chance now with the ball, Shimanga. Oh! What a goal! The first goal of the season from Kabongo Shimanga to the delight of almost everybody in the ground. to the ball, ends in a goal, on 74 minutes, Kabongo Shimanga gives the spotlight a 3-1 lead, he's only been on the pitch for a couple of minutes, and the 24 goal striker from last season, gets number one from this season, a great ball through there, and Kabongo Shimanga latching onto it straight away, the goalkeeper tries to close his angles down, Shimanga knew exactly what it was going to do and slotted it home to give the Spyrites a 3-1 lead. Spreads it left. Now to Horton. A little tug there by uh, Ross Barrows and it's important that Altrincham do what they didn't do on Saturday and that is to hold on to the lead. Deep ball by King and we have not done it. Well, I'm afraid that's a commentator's curse there, if ever there was one. Exactly what happened at Boreham Wood has happened here at the J. Davidson Stadium. A deep free kick is headed in by Tyrone Williams. Yeah, it was a well, good... Well, that is a disaster for the Robins. A great ball in by the Chesterfield man and just headed in. Unlucky for Dermot Me, not to, nothing he could do there. King takes that one short. They've tried that sort of routine a few times. It's with Horton. Horton thinks it up. Another header and another goal. Appeal for handball. It's not been given. Altrincham players feel it's gone in off uh, a hand. The linesman is not going to give anything. The referee is not going to give anything. Uh, it looks to me as if Shimanga is uh, taking the credit. He might have got the final touch on that one. But Chesterfield have turned it right around at the start of this second half. Two balls into the box, two headers won by Williams. That one went in via a deflection, possibly Shivanga with a final touch. A few complaints from Altrincham, but a dreadful start to the second half of the Robins. Jeff 
Chesterfield when they lose the ball, winning it back very quickly. You have King again now. Jack Clark ahead of him. This is Clark. Old Acre. Oh, almost a great ball through to King, but cut out again uh, by uh, Cav Marley. Ollie Banks. King. Nice ball for Mandeville. Mandeville to cross. Chance for Clark! And Jack Clark gives the Spy Race the lead. On 19 minutes. A well worked move between uh, King and Mandeville on this right hand side. The ball into the area from Mandeville. And Jack Clark turned and fired it home to give the Spy Race the lead. Jack Clark, the scorer on 19 minutes, is Chesterfield 1, Southend United 0. Cole on with the ball forward. Quickly getting pulled there, quickly again. Still Joe Quigley. Still Joe Quigley checking everybody on! Oh! Yes, what a great goal! What a great goal by Joe Quigley! The equalising goal from Joe Quigley, his second goal of the season, and what a fantastic goal that was! He took on the sharp end defence almost single handed there. He beat one, he beat two, he beat three. And then fired a shot into the corner, past the goalkeeper. Joe Quigley gets his second goal of the season in some style. It's Chesterfield 2, Southend United 2, and well done to that man, Joe Quigley. Nigerian born, Jezuka Bullen then on for Clark, and uh, Chesterfield on the attack again here as Quigley is in possession. Akinola, King. Turned inside, King with his left foot. Oh, yes! Jeff King with an absolute smashing goal! <laughs> well, he's certainly not injured now, is he? Jeff King, that was an absolute belter! And on the left foot from outside the penalty area, smashed it into the top corner, and the spy ice are back in front. from Jeff King there and Chesterfield have turned it round after going to go behind in the opening minutes of the second of this second half the Spurs have turned it round with two absolutely amazing goals getting his legs out even I've put mine away Paul your players can keep them out sir it's not that it's that chilly to be fair as the ball is thrown into a lot of space for Old Acre and he gets it to Shamanga. 82 minutes gone and Old Acre releases Shamanga, and it only takes one moment of class for that man up front Kabongo Shimanga to score in the 82nd minute and it's from a throw in they've been punished Old Acres played it forward to Shimanga and he's made it 1-0 to Chesterfield. Paul, except Grimes, he was going to play it short, now he's played it out in front of himself. Fires it long. A lot of shirt that Fowler and Quigley have got of one another, frankly. Akegbala, ball infield. Now out wide to Horton. Akegbala 
tries to get past Hoyt and he does. Can he get the ball across? He does. And it runs all the way across and Shimanga's going to reach it. Is he quickly? No, he is quickly. Comes out to the edge. Oh, Dekar! Yeah! Chesterfield have won it with 10 seconds to go. It's Dorking Man, Old Aco, who's won it in the 94th minute for Chesterfield. Incredible scenes. And they are dead on their feet. Every single Maidstone player is down and out. And Maidstone just couldn't keep the ball away from the Maidstone half for long enough. Number 15, Ibris Oroteo. Banks again with the flag kick. Raji for it. Oh, and he's got into the back of the net this time. Chesterfield have a goal back. Well, is there enough time to get a second? Because Chesterfield are still trailing. But Tyrell Williams. And Grimes rising for it. The defender with his arm across him. And Tyrone Williams trying to keep the ball in play. There's no flag from the linesman. Tyrone Williams keeps the ball alive. It comes back to Oldacre. Darren Oldacre now. Banks lays it off for Horton. King is wide here on the left. Horton tries the shot! And Brandon Horton scores with the spotlights. Ten minutes into the second half. And Chesterfield get a goal back. It's the first goal of the season for Brandon Horton. It's Chesterfield 1, Dagenham and Redbridge 3. Banks. The crossing from Banks. Williams! And Tyrell Williams scores his second goal of the season. In fact, I think it's his third, isn't it? Yes, it's his third goal of the season. The ball in from Banks. Tyrone Williams. And it's 3 2. on days like this you do realise how important the local football clubs are there'll be certain people at the game that won't realise oh that's a wonderful cross to pick out Armando Dobra and on his return from injury he has struck early for National League Chesterfield who have been the better of the two and deserve their lead yeah superb ball in from Jeff King Dobram evades his marker and he's he's on the spot keepers out the way and he manages to control his header into the back of the net and he's been bright young Dobra as we mentioned early on and deserves his goal and who's to say is that we tick into the final minute of the first 45 that victory isn't still something they can achieve today trailing by just a solitary goal to National League opposition here's Quigley one of those who's had a glorious opportunity to get a second for the visitors Asante once again looking to find space and this time he's able to do so and he comes up with a wonderful precision finish into the bottom of the corner to put Chesterfield 2-0 in front. Yeah, it's lovely play from Asante, he's got his back to goal, he's always feeling for the defender and he just, once he's in the box the defender can't touch him, a few little manoeuvres of the ball and just turns and drills it into the bottom corner, it's superb from Asante and I think that's exactly what Chesterfield needed just before the half-time whistle throwing his body on the line and it was him again on the line and Conrad Logan gets back in his position and it's a superb reflex save. Getting on with it, Mandeville. They think they deserve more and they've got it now. Kabongo Shimanga, the substitute, has further stretched Chesterfield into the lead and made absolutely sure now of their place in the first round proper of the FA Cup. Yeah. 
they got the rewards in the end. And Logan's not happy about it, but it was. It was Chimanga who just got the tap in two yards out. Ball cut back to him. And I think that's good night. It's the goal they needed. They really did. I think in the second half, they probed and not got anything for it. Shimanga gets his goal. Thanks. That's a good ball. King inside the area. Jeff King still. King with the shot. And King with the goal. A well worked goal by Jeff King. Gets his fourth goal of the season, and the Spirites are in front. It's Chesterfield one, Robin Hill. Dobra, it's a nice ball. Horton pulls it low into the area. Chance for Mandeville. Plays it back to Dobra. Amando Dobra in once more, headed away by Webster. Jeff King on it now. Reynolds keeping him out of the penalty area at the moment. King with the crossing with the left foot and the header in the back of the net from Ollie Banks. Ollie Banks give the Spurs the lead once more. move by Chesterfield that looked like it was going to fizzle out for a moment but when that ball came in again it was Oli Banks there with his head you don't see that many heady goals from Oli Banks but he's sure he's happy with that one as Chesterfield retake the lead in the game here it's Chesterfield 2 Bromley 1 Oli Banks on 61 minutes and Shimanga now with a chance to take this penalty after Bromley have delayed it as much as they can Shimanga versus Tom Smith. And Shimanga fires it home. Kabongo Shimanga with the goal on 73 minutes. It's Shimanga's fifth goal of the season. But I think it's his first goal from his first start of the season. So Shimanga's penalty gives Chesterfield now a fairly commanding lead as we enter the 74th minute. It's Chesterfield 3, Bromley 1. In your morning papers, it'll say 20 yards. Ninth minute of this game. Jeff King steps up to take this free kick. <coughs> There's a four-man York wall and three loose bricks as well as King steps up, takes it, not Go a bad on. effort, and it has gone in for the lead. Jeff King, well, he is on fire at the moment. His fifth goal of the season. He didn't blast it. He placed it around the wall between the loose bricks to the left-hand side of Ethan Ross. Ninth minute, York City nil, Chesterfield one. Ashmore on his toes on the goal line. It's King to take it. Oh, yes! Jeff King with another goal for the Spirats. Ashmore is completely static. And Jeff King is the top scorer here at the Tenney Stadium with six goals this season. Great free kick from the Chesterville wing back. We've seen him do it so many times. Everybody back now for Boreham Wood. Nobody left up front at all. And I think this one might be Old Acres free kick. And it's Darren Old Acre. Oh, yes! Into the corner from Darren Old Acre. And the Spirites take a 2 0 lead. Both goals from set pieces. It's Chesterfield 2, Boreham Wood 0.
Williams to King. Mandeville. Mandeville puts the cross in this time and headed on by Joe Quigley. A well worth move in the end. Joe Quigley gets his third goal of the season. The hard work done by Liam Mandeville. There he is, Mandeville. Shaking hands with Quigley. Mandeville the creator. Quigley the goal scorer. And it's all square. Chesterfield won. Gateshead won and Gateshead's lead lasted less than three minutes. King on the ball, Tyrone Williams coming up from the back. Grimes has stayed back this time. It's Jeff King to strike it. it comes off the outside of the wall and fired home by Mike Mandeville. Leo Mandeville calls the spotlights in the front for the first time tonight. Mandeville, creator of the first goal, scorer of the second. A Jeff King free kick came off the outside of the gateshead wall, came out to Mandeville in the end, and Mandeville struck it nicely past James Montgomery and Joe Quigley with the uh, final header just wide of the Northampton goal. Probably the best chance of the game so far for Chesterfield. The ball given away there to Mandeville. Can Chesterfield make something of this? It's Dobry on it now. Dobry shot! And no man, no Dobry! Gives Chesterfield the lead! Well, it was a poor pass out from the defence. And when Dobry got it, he only had one thing in his mind. Armando Dobra giving the Sparrows the lead. It's a free kick in a good position here. Dobra, who won it, now takes his place in the box. And it is a, a fine right boot that will swing this in now. King to take it. Quickly a great target to aim at in these situations. It's in towards him, and in it goes. Well, it's another assist for King. Not entirely sure who that came off last. Quickly was in there. He's taking the credit of his teammates, and Chesterfield are a goal to the good. Well, whoever got the final touch, it doesn't really matter because that man there, Jeff King, has put in a sublime ball with pace and power. And that is so hard to defend against. I mean, it's a brilliant ball, isn't it? Really, isn't it? A 
Akinola. The referees allowed them to continue here. Advantage play, Akinola. That was on the outside of Joey Jones. Kings arrived in support. Akinola's wriggled away brilliantly. Shamanga waits in the middle, and Dopper was there too. Surely a second it is. Finally it comes. Clements, the player forward from defence. Well, it seems to have taken an age. They've created so many chances for that second goal, and now they have it. I mean, the goal has been coming, you can't say. That Chesterfield just don't deserve this. And when you're making real last-ditch challenges, it's only so often you're going to do it before you find the back of the net. I mean, when you really look at the defending here from Joey Jones, he gets far too tight to Akinola, gets turned far too easily. Just a block there from Clark, and then all of a sudden, falls to Clements, is just in the right place at the right time. They've just started chipping away this Solihull Moors back line. And finally, finally, they found themselves that second goal, which they fully deserve. It's two in two for Clements, got his first senior goal in the win at Torquay last weekend. And there's a second for him. Half time approaching fast here, still scoreless. Dobra shows good physicality. Dobra on the move. This is quickly. Dobra's continued his run. And this is Dobra. Wonderful goal. He scored the winner against Northampton in the first round, and he's opened the scoring here against Wimbledon. Oh, the need the equaliser. 15 minutes or so remaining. Goldacre stabbed out towards King. It's a deep across this time. Oh, he's better than that. He's found the net. Zenev loses the flight of the ball. And surely that is enough for Chesterfield to go through to the third round. The referee making sure the players are all outside the penalty area by Shimanga. It's Shimanga versus Joe Walsh. Shimanga finds it home, and Chesterfield take the lead. It's Kamango Shimanga's sixth goal of the season. He sent Joe Walsh the wrong way. And delight for the home supporters here. Spy rights in front. It's Chesterfield 1, Dorking Mondas 0. The lost impetus there by Ukeg Bulu. He needed to cross it first time and he didn't do that. Horton. Ukeg Bulu once more. Old Acre wanting it in space in the middle of the park. King out to the right. Old Acre lining one up, maybe. It's still there in Old Acre. Now Jeff King trying to get in round the back. And Chesterfield has the goal from Orlando Dobra. Orlando Dobra delighted with that. It was a great move by Chesterfield. And Dobra scores in the 84th minute for the Spyrites to reinstate them in their lead. And Grimes deals with that one nicely before any damage can be done. We'll get Bullham again now for the Spyrites. Chesterfield on the front foot here once more. Quigley on the edge of the area. Mandeville's in here now. Quigley on this penalty spot at the moment. Liam Mandeville in for Joe Quigley. Quigley turns, he shoots, and Quigley gets it over the line. Two goals in as many minutes for the Spyrites. Should seal the three points. Joe Quigley, the scorer. It's goal number five for him this season as well.
play the short one, they play the short one, let them deal with it. Canola on the halfway line. Back to Jones. Jones finds Mandeville, who's just popping up in pockets of space at the moment. Dobra, loose touch, but keeps the ball at his feet. As Gallimore to try and beat, but goes back to Akinola. Akinola spots Mandeville in space, just outside the D. Then Quigley takes a touch away from George Taft, back onto his left foot, drives it towards goal, and finds the bottom right-hand corner, and it hasn't taken long for Chesterfield to equalise. Four minutes in actual fact, and it is Joe Quigley who has found the goal to level things up here at Glanford Park, his sixth of the season, just took a touch away from George Taft and then found room to shift the ball onto his left foot and uh, curled it into the bottom right-hand corner, past the sparing dive of Marcus Dewhurst. And in the 41st minute, we're all square at Glanford Park. Scunthorpe United 1, Chesterfield 1. Chesterfield attempt to play their way out of the press. Gave it to Scunthorpe United, who give it straight back to Chesterfield. And Mandeville's in here. Almost was in behind Alfie Beeston, takes a turn, checks back, plays in King right-hand side of the box. It's across at the back post to Quigley. And they've turned it around at the start of the second half of Chesterfield. Joe Quigley at the double to give them the lead. Chesterfield have given the ball to Scunthorpe United, but they then gave it straight back, and the Spyrites took advantage. Mandeville in behind, turned away from Beeston, played in Jeff King, right-hand side of the box. He flashed it across, and there was Joe Quigley at the back post to turn it home. In the 50th minute, it's Scunthorpe United 1, Chesterfield 2.